concentration and breathing. The main difference between men and the animals is the difference in their power of concentration. All success in any line of work is the result of this. Everybody knows something about concentration. We see its results every day. High achievements in art, music, etc. are the results of concentration. An animal has very little power of concentration. Those who have trained animals find much difficulty in the fact that the animal is constantly forgetting what is told him. He cannot concentrate his mind long upon anything at a time. Herein is the difference between man and the animals. Man has the greatest power of concentration. The difference in their power of concentration also constitutes the difference between man and man. Compare the lowest with the highest man. The difference is in the degree of concentration. This is the only difference. Everybody's mind becomes concentrated at times. We all concentrate upon those things we love. And we love those things upon which we concentrate our minds. What mother is there that does not love the face of her homeliest child? That face is to her the most beautiful in the world. She loves it because she concentrates her mind on it. And if everyone could concentrate his mind on that same face, everyone would love it. It would be to all the most beautiful face. We all concentrate our minds upon those things we love. When we hear beautiful music, our minds become fastened upon it and we cannot take them away. Those who concentrate their minds upon what you call classical music do not like common music and vice versa. Music in which the notes follow each other in rapid succession holds the mind readily. A child loves lively music because the rapidity of the notes gives the mind no chance to wander. A man who likes common music dislikes classical music because it is more complicated and requires a greater degree of concentration to follow it. The great trouble with such concentrations is that we do not control the mind. It controls us. Something outside of ourselves, as it were, draws the mind into it and holds it as long as it chooses. We hear melodious tunes or see a beautiful painting, and the mind is held fast. We cannot take it away. If I speak to you well upon a subject you like, your mind becomes concentrated upon what I am saying. I draw your mind away from yourself and hold it upon the subject in spite of yourself. Thus our attention is held. Our minds are concentrated upon various things in spite of ourselves. We cannot help it. Now the question is, can this concentration be developed and can we become masters of it? The yogis say, yes. The yogis say that we can perfect control of the mind. On the ethical side, there is danger in the development of the power of concentration. The danger of concentrating the mind upon an object and then being unable to detach it at will. This state causes great suffering. Almost all our suffering is caused by our not having the power of detachment. So along with the development of concentration, we must develop the power of detachment. We must learn not only to attach the mind to one thing exclusively, but also to detach it at a moment's notice and place it upon something else. These two should be developed together to make it safe. This is the systematic development of the mind. To me, the very essence of education is concentration of mind, not the collecting of facts. If I had to do my education over again and had any voice in the matter, I would not study facts at all. I would develop the power of concentration and detachment. And then with a perfect instrument, I could collect facts at will. Side by side, in the child should be developed the power of concentration and detachment. My development has been one-sided all along. I developed concentration without the power of detaching my mind at will. And the most intense suffering of my life has been due to this. Now I have the power of detachment, but I had to learn it in later life. We should put our minds on things. They should not draw our minds to them. We are usually forced to concentrate. Our minds are forced to become fixed upon different things by an attraction in them which we cannot resist. To control the mind, to place it just where we want it, requires special training. It cannot be done in any other way. In the study of religion, the control of the mind is absolutely necessary. We have to turn the mind back upon itself in this study. In training the mind, the first step is to begin with the breathing. Regular breathing puts the body in a harmonious condition and it is then easier to reach the mind. In practicing breathing, the first thing to consider is asana or posture. 
Any posture in which a person can sit easily is his proper position. The spine should be kept free and the weight of the body should be supported by the ribs. Do not try by contrivances to control the mind. Simple breathing is all that is necessary in that line. All austerities to gain concentration of the mind are a mistake. Do not practice them. The mind acts on the body and the body in its turn acts upon the mind. They act and react upon each other. Every mental state creates a corresponding state in the body and every action in the body has its corresponding effect on the mind. It makes no difference whether you think the body and mind are two different entities or whether you think they are both but one body, the physical body being the gross part and the mind the fine part. They act and react upon each other. The mind is constantly becoming the body. In the training of the mind, it is easier to reach it through the body. The body is easier to grapple with than the mind. The finer the instrument, the greater the power. The mind is much finer and more powerful than the body. For this reason, it is easier to begin with the body. The science of breathing is the working through the body to reach the mind. In this way, we get control of the body and then we begin to feel the finer working of the body, the finer and more interior, and so on till we reach the mind. As we feel the finer workings of the body, they come under our control. After a while, you will be able to feel the operation of the mind on the body. You will also feel the working of one half of the mind upon the other half, and also feel the mind recruiting the nerve centers, for the mind controls and governs the nervous system. You will feel the mind operating along the different nerve currents. Thus, the mind is brought under control by regular, systematic breathing, by governing the gross body first and then the fine body. The first breathing exercise is perfectly safe and very healthful. It will give you good health and better your condition generally at least. The other practices should be taken up slowly and carefully.